talk about the big emotional turnaround. Uh, Notre Dame drove the ball down to the two yard line and then you get that big turnover. Talk about that a little bit. To start the game, the one of the very right, first thing. Uh, I mean, it was it was huge because we, we came in, I thought Mark Snyder and Rick Smith and the defensive backs, they did a great job. And we took a mindset that bend but don't break. Uh, bend but don't break. Let's not give up the home run ball. I think Michael Floyd is a great player on film. I think he's a lot better live than he is on film. I think he is I think he is one of the special players in college football. I think he's a difference maker. He is special. And because of him, we just turned and said, let's make sure that we try and keep him in front of him. Even trying to do that, he turned, still caught one later. But the whole mindset was bend, don't break. Our, our, our motto was make him snap it again. Just don't let him in the end zone, make him a snap it again. I don't care if it's a 20-play drive. They haven't scored yet if they don't cross that end zone. Don't let him in the end zone. Make him drive the field. Don't give him anything cheap. And so when they got down there in the two-yard line, I think it was Jarrell Young came up and made the strip. Uh, and then just a great job scooping and scoring, kind of broke a little shoelace tackle and went and scored. And you look at it, and you look up, and they've had the ball and driven the whole length of the field and probably about 15 yards a clip. And you look up and you're winning seven nothing. Uh, kind of a good feeling at that point with where we are, but kind of symbolize a little bit of the day, especially when you look at this game statistically. Thank you. Were you surprised at all to uh, see Tommy Reese start the second half? Is that something you guys prepared for? Um, you know, I, the two quarterbacks are very similar in what they do, so it's not like a, run, a running quarterback that's all option and a drop back guy. Uh, they just, they, you prepare for them the same way. Um, I think he really impressed me with what he did coming out there today. The way he stood in there and some of the shots he took and some of the strikes he threw down the field. And I believe he had a number of drop balls, too, because he threw some great balls. I was really impressed with him. Was I surprised or shocked? No, you're down 16 nothing. I certainly understand that mindset to say, hey, we got to do something. we got to do something to get a, to get a charge out of our football team. So uh, I don't sit in his locker room and make his decisions, but it did not shock me. No, sir. You've won a lot of big games here, but... This one may be one of the biggest. I don't know. Can you just put it in perspective about what this means for your program? Uh, I think it's it's huge. Notre Dame is, as I said, one of the most tradition-rich programs. They have played football 120 years. We are celebrating our 104th victory today as a program. So when you talk about how young we are, I don't think you can measure what this pro what this a win like this for us means on the road with our youth. I think that you know we've had some big wins in our program's history, having wins at Miami and Florida State and Auburn and on the road at Cle with Clemson in the bowl game. We've had some big wins. But I think, as I told the team last week, I'm much more concerned in how we handle this game, whether we win or lose, than I am what happens to it. Because we have had some big wins. What we have not done is we have not been able to line up and play consistently throughout the course of the year and win a Big East championship. And that's the number one goal that we have as a football team right now, what we're trying to do. Skip, you